Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm so happy you're joining me for this episode of Saturday with Sarah. Today, we're going to play with the Curious Cats collection from our friends at Hunky Dory. Now, I know I'm not the only cat lover in the crafting world, so I'm excited to share this collection with you. And we can start with the luxury topper set. Now this has foiled and die cut topper sheets. And it also comes with an inspiration sheet here too, just to help get your inspiration going. Now here you can see some of these topper designs and these will just punch right out of the backing sheet. And they make wonderful card focals. Of course, you've also got matching elements and borders for the inside of your card and of course the envelope as well. So some really sweet designs here. Now you've also got some backing sheets in here as well, and lots of them also have some metallic gold foiling. I think you can see it on here, and then on our little paw prints here too. Now a couple of other things that go along. There's also a set of Curious Cats uh, coordinating cardstock. Now this is the adorable, scorable cardstock that we love so much. And you can see all of these colors in here. So your cardstock needs are set. There's also two uh, clear acrylic stamps here. Now these are perfect as borders and they're great for coloring in too. So we have the peekaboo cats and cat climbing frame. Then there is a pack of luxury foiled acetate. And I've just got this with a piece of white cardstock behind it so you can see that beautiful balloon design in there. And this is just a lot of fun for layering. So for example, here's one of the sheets from the topper collection, and here's a really fun bunting design. You can just simply place this right on top, but you can also do some coloring techniques with your alcohol markers on the back of this as well. So lots of options for that. And then finally, one of my favorites, is a Curious Cats pad. Now, I am a huge fan of Hunky Dory's pads, if you need a quick card focal or something to go on the inside of your card, this pad works beautifully. So it has 144 pages, and these measure about 4 inches by 6 inches. Oh, there's my kitty cat. And the designs are just really fun. So some vertical, some horizontal, just really sweet designs. Here they are having a party. And then toward the back you've got some elements that you can use to um, dress up or accessorize your cats, which trust me is easier to do in paper than it is with a real cat. So lots of fun that you can have with these. And the designs are all just so whimsical and playful. I think you'll have a great time with this. So of course, everything is totally coordinated. You can mix and match really easily for wonderful handmade cards. Now I have a couple of projects to share with you today and some demos too. As you can see, we have a lot to explore and I'm really glad you're here. Come play with us. Let's start with this card here, which is already pretty cute with this fluffy cat as the card focal. Now we also have the option to add some more embellishments and we'll talk about that. But first I want to talk about the foundation of the card. Now I'm starting with a piece of pink cardstock from the cardstock collection and I've simply folded it in half and scored it to be my card base. So my card will be five and three quarters by eight and a half when folded. Now when folding, I really do recommend using a bone folder just to give a nice even crease on that cardstock. Now I've also trimmed down a piece of this acetate. Maybe if I wiggle this, you can see the reflection on there. So it's patterned with some really fun uh, fish silhouettes and some fish bones on there. And the question is always about gluing acetate to the paper without your glue showing through on this clear surface. So my tip is to use a glue stick and use it sparingly at the edges and a bit more where you know your focal will be. So I'm going to bring in, let's see, I've got a piece of cardstock and then this same acetate here. So what I would do is choose my focal, and we can take this little tabby cat here, and I would use whatever adhesive I normally use, maybe a double-sided tape, to glue this onto just the acetate. Then simply flip it over and use whatever double-sided tape or other adhesive you want to just on this area here. Flip this back over and position it in place, and that will hold your element together. 
Now, the other thing you can do is take that glue stick and again, very sparingly, just dab a little bit into the corners. Now, I suggest you put the glue onto the cardstock or whatever surface you're applying the acetate onto rather than the acetate itself. And of course, do avoid when you're working with just the acetate, uh, double-sided tape or a white glue, which will definitely show through here. So double-sided tape for this area here and a glue stick for the remaining areas. And that's what I've done here for this card. So I've mounted our little kitty cat onto some brown cardstock and then use my double-sided tape to secure him or her to the acetate. And then I've used just a dab of glue stick in each of the corners. So once that's all secure, I can either leave this as is, looks pretty cute, or I can add some decoration. Now, all of the focal images here are coming from the Curious Cats pad. So remember, there are lots and lots of images in here, which make really perfect card focals. So besides <laughs> this fluffy one, we've got this other fluffy one, and we have maybe a black cat, and we've got, oh, it looks like another black cat. We've got lots and lots of different cats in here for you to choose from. So what you can do is use them as they are. You can also kind of dress them up. And there are a few sheets in the set that include some cute accessory items. So whether they're things to wear or they are things to eat or plants, little mice, and all kinds of balloons and decorations. So you've got a lot of really fun things to play with. They're super simple to cut out, and then all you do is just glue them on. So what you can do is kind of say, okay, maybe I want this kitty to have, let's see, a party hat, for example. You can do that quite easily. Lots of bow tie combinations. There's also, you know, some sunglasses and all kinds of really fun and cute accessories. So this is one look you can get. You can also, let's see, we'll take this beautiful black cat here. Maybe you want to swap the party hat over here and you want to give this one a slightly more formal look. So lots of really fun options for you. And of course, some of these little accessories are really cute too. Now, some of your cats will already have some accessories, like this guy's already got his party hat on. So you could even swap this out, maybe for those sunglasses to have a really cool cat. So again, lots of fun and lots of really neat ways so that you can personalize your kitties. So what I'll do is I'll glue something in place here for the front of this card, and we'll be sure to show that to you in the project gallery. Now for the card inside, I have a piece of the pattern cardstock from the Topper collection, along with a topper featuring this same cat enjoying a piece of cake on there. And the um, sentiment on here is also from the pad. So again, another quick and easy cutout on here. So you can see how easily all of these elements come together in a really fun way. So that is our first card. Now we also have some other fun ways to use these elements with some tools that you may already have in your stash, like alcohol markers. And that's what I've used to color the acetate here in this bunting area. So let me grab my markers and we can take a look at how to do this. So here I'm using the Tri-Blend markers from Crafter's Companion, and these are so cool. Each pen has three different shades of the same color, giving you a lot of marker for your money. And you can see here with this one marker, you've got three different sections. Well, if you turn this around, you'll see that you've got light, middle, and dark. So three shades of the same color, which means that you've got lots of options for coloring. Now, because these are alcohol markers, they work beautifully on acetate, and they will dry really quickly, and they won't smear. And that's what I've used here to color the bunting on my acetate sheet. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna move my card out of the way. We'll take a closer look at that later. And I've just got my acetate um, positioned on a piece of white cardstock so that you can see this. So what I can do is simply position this down and grab whichever color I want to. Of course, I can choose which of those shades I want to use and then simply color in the design. 
So I'm just gonna kind of scribble this in here. What's really nice about these markers is that you have a nice firm tip on here, which means that you can get even into some detail and some of these finer pointier bits of the bunting are really easy to color in. They give you a little bit more precision so that you can make sure that you're coloring just the areas that you want to. So we'll scribble in with a little bit of this blue and maybe go back and do some of those stripes in here. We'll do some on the bottom layer as well. And you can start to see how quickly and easily you can add just a little pop of color to your acetate. And there are so many sheets of acetate in this collection, so you've got lots of pieces that are colorable. I'm not sure if that's our, the correct word, but I think you know what I mean. So you can see here, again, quick and easy to do. So let's see, I'll grab this beautiful shade here and color this in. And of course, there are lots and lots of different shades of these markers. So you've got lots of choices to make too. I've got, already got some blue. Let's come back with a little more of this kind of pinky purple. It's a lot of fun to use. We'll color this one in here as well. I think you can see how easily this comes together and how much fun it is just to add a little bit of color in here. So then what I'll do is simply flip it over now the ink is already dry, so I don't have to worry about that. And then I can position this down. So you can put this onto white cardstock, you could put it onto colored cardstock. Of course, you've got a lot in the set. So you've got lots of different options there. Now here, I've put it down onto some of this green cardstock from the collection. And again, just putting my adhesive behind where I know this topper will go, and then a little bit up in the corners. So here, I've added a cute little tabby cat from the topper set and another little sentiment and a bit of gingham ribbon. Now for the card inside, I've got even more cats. <laughs> and this is the stamped image from the cat climbing frame stamp. And I stamped it with black on the inside of my card. And again, just use the alcohol markers to accent areas of the design. So you can see here, it's not completely colored in. I just use the markers to add little bits of color in there. So I'll show you with this piece that I've already stamped here. Now with the markers, again, like I said, you're spoiled for choice. You've got a lot of different shades to choose from. And you've got some colors that are really nice, soft neutrals. And that's what I used for a lot of these little cats here. So I'm not coloring them in all the way. I'm just kind of accenting some of the areas where their fur pattern is. So where some of that shading is on here. And again, because you've got some really nice, fine, sturdy tips with these pens, you can get into some of the detail areas. And you can start to see how those kitty cats are already sort of coming out, even though I'm not coloring them completely. Of course, you certainly could. That's absolutely up to you. But if you want to just add a little bit of highlight, a little bit of color, you can do this very easily with just accenting some of the details because these stamps are actually really pretty detailed. So you've got a lot to do on there. Now this was all with the middle color of this pen. So if I come back with the lighter shade, I can color in a little bit more here too. I think I've missed this little guy. And maybe kind of go along his tummy and this one's ears here. So you can start to see, you can really have a lot of fun with this. Okay, that's with one of the markers. Now you've got some soft neutrals. You've also got some bit more bright, uh, playful colors, and these work beautifully with the uh, balls of string and the toys here. So again, that nice firm tip is going to allow me to trace over some of those um, detail areas. Oh, here's this feather. We can kind of do this as well. Let's see, kind of come along here like that. And then for the posts and for the rest of this, I used a light color, a light shade of blue. And I just, once again, accented along the detail areas of the stamp design. So 
I'm really just letting the stamp guide me as far as the coloring process here goes, just to create little shadows and details. So I think you can see how that goes. And then of course you can pop in a little bit more color with some of the polka dots on here, for example. So lots of fun that you can have with the set and with those markers. So if you're somebody who's new to using markers or someone who's maybe wondering about getting into using markers, this is a really fun way to put them to use without having to dedicate a whole lot of time to coloring in a complete image because this is quite a large image as well. So I've just got this stamped on the inside of my card. I've added a sentiment from the Topper collection and then I've got a really sweet little card here. Now there's another stamp in the collection and I want to show you a really fun uh, design with that using the um, peekaboo cats. So let's take a look at that. This card features an easy folding technique that is one of my favorites and goes so well with this stamp. So I'm starting with one of Hot Off The Press's five by six and a half inch blank white cards and just folding back the front panel to meet the fold of the card. So let's take a look at this. Really simple to do. So I've got my scored card here. So normally what you'll do, of course, is fold this up on the um, score line and again, you may want to grab a bone folder just to score that down perfectly. Then you'll take just the front flap of the card and fold this back to meet the side fold. And then once again, crease that down, come back with your bone folder and give that a really nice crease. And then you have your folded card ready to decorate and a whole lot of fun to decorate with a kit like this one from Hunky Dory. I love Hunky Dory card collections for cards like this because there are just so many fun ways that you can decorate the front panel and then the inside too, just however you wish. Now what I've done here for the card inside, I've used some of the cardstock from the topper set and I've also used it on this front panel. So this red is also part of this sheet here. Now here I've added a border die cut and I've added a border die cut here as well. Then I've um, stamped the cats onto the cardstock. Now a couple of tips here. This is the cardstock from the collection and it is coated. So I really recommend using a stays on or permanent ink and you may even want to give the stamped image a quick zap with your heat tool to make sure the ink is really dry before handling it. Then you just add your piece to the inside of your card and you can add some of the borders and the toppers here so that you've got a complete design when it's open or when it is closed. Lots of fun and a great way to use this collection. Our last project is a cute little mini folder and I'm using the mini folder die from Hot Off The Press to die cut this. And I've cut the main piece from that cardstock, that beautiful green cardstock. And then I've got the inside pockets die cut from one of the topper sheets, as well as this inside that's been lined with some more of that beautiful patterned cardstock. So let's take a look. This is one of my favorite dies from Hot Off The Press. You may have already noticed this, but it's the mini folder cutting die set. Now in here, you've got three dies. So you've got one for the base piece and then two more which will form your pockets. So when you die cut your piece, your base piece will look like this, kind of like a folded card. You'll go ahead and score that and fold it like so. And then you'll have two pieces that will look kind of like this. So I've just die cut these from plain cardstock so that we can see. Now you'll have your cut lines, you'll also have your scoring lines on here too. So all you need to do is just fold those up. Again, I recommend using that bone folder just to get a nice crisp line on there. And then what you can do is use some red line tape or some sturdy tape to simply glue your pockets into place. Now before you glue those pockets in, you can also line the inside of your mini folder with another um, color of cardstock or another pattern design. So lots of different options for you. There's a lot of decorating options for this as well. They're a lot of fun to make and to give. 
So for the front of my mini folder, I've got this really cute little guy here. Now this is from the topper set and I've glued down the frame using um, double-sided tape. And then I've got some foam tape popping the center piece up. And then I've got more foam tape for this little sentiment here. A Little bit of gingham ribbon on there. Then for the inside here, I've lined the inside of my mini folder with patterned cardstock from the topper set. I die cut the pockets from cardstock from the topper set too. And I think you can see some of that metallic gold on those little paw prints down there. Now for my tag in here, I've just cut down some of that cardstock. I stamped with those peekaboo cats, again, using black stays on. And then they create a frame for this little topper piece here. And then of course, I've got a little bit of ribbon on there as well and he just tucks right inside the, this pocket. Then on the other side, I've got this little cutie and uh, also another sentiment going on over here. Quick and easy to do, and these are just so much fun to make and so much fun to give as well. And this is our final project for today. So a big thank you to our friends at Hunky Dory for this adorable Curious Cats collection. It was a lot of fun to work with, as you can see. And a big thank you to you for joining me today. We're always so glad that you're here. We're really happy that you're part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. Be sure to see the money saver on the right side of your screen at paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, just have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. If you enjoyed our video today, we really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five videos each week, so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.